So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with some unbelievable videos that cannot be explained, all right? So this one here, it says what Elon Musk just said about aliens will shock you. So we're going to check it out. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join the fam. Let's see what's going on. It's a question as old as humanity itself. Are we alone in the universe? In view of the thousands upon thousands of formations that sparkle towards us in the firmament, is it even conceivable that Earth is the only celestial body in the cosmos that is home to life? Official evidence of extraterrestrial life is still a long way off. However, this does not mean that the existence of our extraterrestrial neighbors is categorically ruled out. Quite the opposite. Many experts are firmly convinced that space is teeming with other creatures. As the person who wants to teeming? transform Mars into the first human outpost in space in the near future, Elon Musk has his own opinion on this topic. But what does the billionaire CEO of Tesla and SpaceX really think about the possibility of extraterrestrial life? And why is what Musk has to say about this so disturbing? Let's get to the bottom of this exciting topic together. So stay tuned until the end. But first, you are asked, do you believe that extraterrestrial life exists? And if so, why haven't we found it yet? Please give us a thumbs up. I think we need to stop asking that question. Do we believe they exist? I think we just need to just keep giving out the information and people will make that decision for themselves up and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. The most exciting comments will be marked with a heart and pinned to the top. Vain search. We've received the wow signal sent information into space like the Voyager Golden Records and tracked down mysterious objects like Oumuamua that are suspected to be alien spacecraft. And yet, there is still no trace of a solid, unshakable breakthrough that can prove the existence of extraterrestrial life. And according to some leading experts like Stephen Hawking, we should be extremely fortunate that this is so. But more on that later. But what does Elon Musk actually think about this topic? As is well known, the extremely rich entrepreneur has been dreaming of bringing humans permanently to Mars for some time. If we take this idea further, a successful implementation could possibly lay the foundation for much larger missions. Suppose that one day in the distant future, we actually manage to expand far beyond the solar system. If the propulsion technologies of the future make it possible to make interstellar travel a reality and we can reach and colonize celestial bodies that we currently do not even dare to dream of, what awaits us in the vastness of space? Do we encounter only a yawning void in the alien star and planetary systems? Or perhaps flourishing civilizations that are far superior to ours? Well, Elon Musk's answer to the question is as succinct as it is simple. I haven't seen any evidence of extraterrestrials, but Musk doesn't want to make it that easy for himself. In the same breath, he mentions an apparent contradiction that has been giving research headaches for decades. What? In Musk's words, the train of thought put forward by Italian physicist Enrico Fermi in 1950 can be summarized as follows. Where are the aliens? If the universe is really 13.8 billion years old, shouldn't aliens be everywhere? And if not, why not? I think Carl Sagan once said that there could either be a lot of aliens or none at all. Either would be equally terrifying. Basically, the Fermi paradox is based on the great age of the universe and its large number of stars. In view of the fact that the development of life on Earth was not an absolute exception based on extremely improbable coincidences, our Milky Way... So let's think about that question for a second, right? If they, they're out there, why haven't we seen them? Why isn't there an abundance of them, right? Now, we've had several different things that we've spoken about that could be the reason why. One, they could have already been here before. We're not the only civilization or the current um, life forms that have claimed or proclaimed to have seen, possibly seen aliens or had encounters. Ancient civilizations before us have, have detailed drawings of possible scenes of aliens. So maybe they've already be, been here, gotten the information, and, and what we're seeing nowadays is balloons or drone looking things or spaceships up there. 
And maybe they're just coming back to check to see if, okay, we've made any progress on technology close to them or anything like that. Strictly observations. You know what I mean? Um, maybe they are here among us and we don't know. You ever thought about that? Like there is a ton of different reasonings why we haven't seen them or could be possibilities that we haven't seen them. They could be amongst us. We don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? So think about that, man. Should therefore be teeming with extraterrestrial life forms. Should there be a single civilization capable of interstellar colonization in our home galaxy, then our galactic neighborhood could be fully colonized within a few million years. So in a nutshell, the core question of the paradox is, if aliens exist, why aren't they here? The question of first contact. But how would the encounter between humans and their extraterrestrial neighbors look in detail? In this regard, most science fiction films do not paint a particularly rosy picture. Instead That's of a peaceful fact. exchange, the first contact often leads to the outbreak of brutal wars. When asked about this portrayal, Elon Musk said, if that's the case, then we're in big trouble. If it's possible for them to come to us, then they are vastly superior to us technologically. Then we're done. We're I've said that, bro. Like, if they show up here, that can mean that could be very bad for us. Cause then they have the confidence to show up here, right? Meaning they've already done their research on us and know that maybe our weapons are nowhere no match for them. So they show up here. It's bad. It could be bad. You know what I mean? It could be very bad. You, we've all heard the stories in different accounts of pilots trying to chase and figure out what this thing is, and they can't keep up speed-wise. So, like Elon said, it could be bad. To us, then they are vastly superior to us technologically. Then we're done. We're as helpless as children. In detail, these statements correspond to some extent with the so-called berserker theory. This explanation of the Fermi paradox Sam. is based on the assumption that the highly developed civilizations in space are not at all interested in harmonious coexistence. On the contrary, the superior species would send artificial death probes into space in order to selectively wipe out other peoples. In this way, potential enemies and competitors for resources are to be destroyed in order to pave the way for their own expansion. The dark forest theory takes a similar line since most extraterrestrial civilizations are afraid of such annihilation strikes, they do everything they can to remain undetected for as long as possible. Just think of the eponymous dark forest through which dangerous predators roam. Those who camouflage themselves and keep a low profile have the best chance of survival. Possible dangers So is it at all desirable to get in touch with our extraterrestrial contemporaries? Well, researchers like Stephen Hawking answer that question with a resounding no. The genius who died in 2018 gave us an urgent warning. In order to ensure the survival of mankind, we should immediately stop actively searching for extraterrestrial civilizations because it is really? actually conceivable that the aliens see our Earth exclusively as a potential source of resources that must be robbed and subjugated. If the information we served on a silver platter, such as the Voyager Golden Records or the Pioneer plaques, got into the possession of an aggressive species, it would be easy for them to discover our vulnerabilities and prepare for a major invasion war. Let's just think about the discovery of the so-called New World by Christopher Columbus and the subsequent colonization by Europeans. As it is well known, this ended in a bloody catastrophe for the Native Americans. If you like, then we should hope that the aliens carry as few human characteristics as possible. A question of time. I don't think sympathy will be one of them, though. <laughs> Does Elon Musk think it's possible that other intelligent life exists in the universe? At an event, he answered this question with, it seems likely. This is one of the big questions in physics and philosophy. Where are the aliens? Maybe they're among us. I don't know. And with a smile, some people think I'm an alien, but that's not true. A little less funny was Musk's statement when asked if first contact could happen in the next 50 years. It's really hard to say. If there are super intelligent aliens out there, they're probably already watching us. We're just not smart See? enough to notice. And further, if an advanced species is interested in populating the galaxy, and let's say it is able to travel at 10 or 20% of light speed, then it could populate the entire galaxy in 10 million years. 
disturbing thoughts. Even more chilling are the phrases Musk uttered when explaining how the aliens might view us. As a result, in the eyes of the extraterrestrials, we could represent a kind of plague that needs to be eradicated as soon as possible. But Musk didn't want to rule out the possibility that we actually embody the only advanced life form in the universe. Accor see, that's what make, it makes me think about that type of stuff. Like, how do they view us when they see us, you know, fighting amongst each other? back and forth on our own planet. You know what I mean? They may look at that and say, okay, we need to, or this is our opportunity to step in there fighting amongst each other. They're destro destroying the, their resources. Let's swoop in, do something to them, and then take what's left of the resources and get out of here. According to the theory of the Great Filter, it is conceivable that a civilization must overcome some basic challenges or threats before it can make the transition to interstellar spaceflight. It is therefore possible that the remaining species failed at one of these intermediate steps. An alternative holds that the technological advancement of a civilization inevitably leads to its own annihilation. In our case, self-extinction could be due to nuclear war, genetically modified pathogens, or an uncontrollable greenhouse effect. Yep. Lack of interest? I want to make one thing clear. To my knowledge, there is no evidence of extraterrestrial life. And if someone says, but what about all the UFO sightings? I say, come on guys, just look at the quality of the footage. People should at least use an iPhone camera to be believable. This statement by Elon Musk shows that he does not want to get into the field of unconfirmed incidents and speculation with his views. But are the aliens even interested in contacting us? Or is it perhaps just enough for them to just watch us from behind the scenes to make sure we don't blow ourselves up. Musk responded to those questions. They're definitely subtle. I mean, if they wanted to identify themselves, they certainly could. You could just show up and say, hi, it's me, smiling, saying you are definitely behaving cautiously. Wasted time? Actually, one might think that a man who dreams of populating alien planets deals comparatively often with the alien topic, but the exact opposite is the case. According to his own statements, Musk does not deal with the question of extraterrestrial life at all. What's more, in view of the lack of success, he even considers such projects as kind of a waste of time. Even more devastating is his verdict on the parascientific field of pre-astronautics. Archaeologists study the whole world. If we could even find something like say, a tiny cube of titanium inside the pyramid, then it would be clear. It must have been aliens, because the people of that time could not produce such objects. Or an antique computer. Okay, people didn't have computers, so they were aliens. But we just can't find anything like that. Everything we discover can be explained from an archaeological point of view. If the aliens had visited us in the past, they would have left something behind. Mysterious object on the sun. As already mentioned, from a purely technical point of view, there is no solid evidence that extraterrestrial life actually exists. Conversely, however, this does not mean that the existence of extraterrestrial life forms is absolutely ruled out among the ranks of experts. Where the official facts reach their limits, the field of equally exciting and controversially discussed ufology begins. In fact, some people are now firmly convinced that there are countless alien civilizations in the gigantic expanses of the cosmos, and that from a technical point of view... Can't be mad at them for feeling that way, man. When you think and you listen to things and you hear some of this declassified information that comes out, who could blame anyone for believing? They are vastly superior to us terrestrials. Scott C. Waring, a self-proclaimed alien hunter based in Thailand, also firmly believes that aliens exist. In order to search for our extraterrestrial neighbors, we would not even have to turn our gaze to distant galaxies. In fact, some extraterrestrials are said to make regular trips to our home solar system and leave messages for humanity there. But what leads the alien hunter to such a daring thesis that, according to his statements, can even be proven? One of these supposed pieces of evidence was provided by NASA itself. Not so long ago, the renowned space agency published some images of the sun that were taken by the SOHO probe. As Waring examined the images, he immediately recognized the strange shape on our planetary system's host star. After careful analysis, he came to the conclusion that this strange shape looked shockingly like the number two. 
This in turn led the convinced alien supporter to a no less exciting train of thought. The gigantic number we see on the sun's surface was deliberately immortalized there by a species unknown to us. But what message could be hidden in the simple number? According to Waring, it's not a declaration of intergalactic war like we know it from so many Hollywood movies, but a symbol of love, harmony, and balance. In detail, Waring believes that the extraterrestrials are telling us to go back to the forces of the universe in the power of the community. Accordingly, the extraterrestrial life forms would be beings with angelic powers. Those unfamiliar with the esoteric theories of the alien hunter believe Waring fell prey to a familiar delusion. Pareidolia This is the phenomenon of recognizing familiar shapes, faces, or objects in objects and patterns. You've probably already laid down in the grass on a beautiful summer's day and gazed at the passing clouds. It is not uncommon for us to recognize a wide variety of structures in the clouds. This is because our brain tends to conform, diffuse, and apparently warp our perceptual images to familiar shapes and patterns. Of course, Waring doesn't want to hear anything about such explanations. Not only does he remain adamant that he is always right, but he also believes that NASA is doing everything it can to hide from the public the long-established existence of aliens. What are your thoughts on the alien hunter's views? Feel free to let us know in the comments below. Space music. If aliens... You notice they starting to say that more and more, whether or not who's hiding. Each time it's a different agency, whether it's NASA, whether it's the government, whether it's like, they keep saying that, throwing that out there. Just, just want y'all to pay attention to that. Supposedly do not exist, then try explaining the following story. What was up with the strange whistling noises the Apollo 10 astronauts heard in May 1969? To pave the way for the first manned moon landing, Eugene Cernan, Thomas Stafford, and John Young had gone into lunar orbit, where they tested the descent, ascent, approach, and docking maneuvers. In the audio recordings that were later released, we witnessed Cernan asking his colleagues if they also hear the strange whistling. The two men agreed and somehow the melodic sounds almost reminded them of a kind of space music. It is commonly believed that the noise was due to radio interference, which the astronauts heard through their headphones. However, not everyone is convinced of this explanation. Some believe that there was something far more sinister behind the space music. All right, folks, now it's your turn. What do you think about Elon Musk's statements? Do you think extraterrestrial life exists? We look forward to your comments. Please leave us a like and subscribe to support us for free. And like I said, we're not going to ask the question. We're just going to keep putting the information out there, out there, out there for everybody to think for themselves and start receiving it and uh, make their own decision. You know, keep putting it out there. But you start picking up on things that they keep throwing out there in these videos, man, this agency, that agency, this agency, that agent, this person, this person's covering this up. It's not by choice. Y'all get at me in the comment section though and let me know what you thought of this video and stick around and stay tuned. Till the next one, I'm gone. Peace.